I finally got around to planting up my ranunculus and my anemones. But I had to build a brand new bed. That's three beds now that I have built this year. And what a mess I've made of my garden. <laughs> but hopefully once the flowers and perennials and annuals start filling up these borders and the grass recovers around it a bit, um, then it won't look so bad. But this is the new border because I didn't want them in the original border that I did over there. Remember in my previous video and I put this silly little piece of wood ring fencing where I was going to plant them and it was just the whole thing's horrible so I'm going to actually remove that once they get going. So the way I build a border is I basically just turn over, um, it's a grassy area so I just turn it over, I remove as much of the soil from the lump of grass as I can so as not to destroy it too much, I throw the grassy bit away and then I just sort of break down the lumps and add some compost and improver. I do put this wooden edging round. It's not the best, but, well, I say it's not the best. I just, obviously it would be more attractive with brick, but, you know, that would be a much bigger job. So I just put this wood down and eventually, obviously when the plants grow, they'll all soften those edges anyway. You won't even see it. So um, that's where I'm at with that. So this was the bed for my ranunculars. And I figured I would put them here on the path because this is the first sort of bed from uh, looking down the garden from the house. And as the ranunculus are a bit shorter, well, two things. One is they're going to make a bright block of beautiful early colour. And two, uh, they're shorter. So I'll still be able to see flowers in the other borders um, flowering behind. So it'll create that layered effect as you look down the garden. Right, so here they all are, and they've really sprouted now. Uh, even the um, anemones actually have sprouts. I'm really worried that I left these too late, even now, because they've only been in the bed a few days. I will do an update uh, on it. But I, I have to say, I am really nervous about uh, whether I left them too long, because they have these kind of pale sprouts where they obviously haven't seen any light natural light but I couldn't plant them in the original border that I planned for them because well first of all I had too much in there and I realized the spot wasn't big enough I had too many other plants rather in there and also uh, as I said I wanted something mid-range height in that border and so I needed the ranunculars further towards the house looking down the garden after I broke up the soil I improved it with some compost and really once I've done that and spread the compost evenly, oh I did put some feed, I don't think the ranunculus need feed because obviously all their nutrients are in their tuber which they um, collected from the previous year. I did add, add some extra gravel here to just tidy up the area because they, they, I do have winding paths around my garden and around my borders, I'm going to extend those around my border, garden uh, borders. And they do need constantly replacing with gravel until they're a bit more established. As you can see down there, it goes around the fire pit. And then I'm going to weave some more around my other borders, just so that I'm not always walking through the mud. I will leave grass around a bit of lawn because I think it is beneficial to the wildlife. But, um, you know, mainly I don't like mowing, so I'll be getting rid of most of it. So here were all the trays laid out and spoiler alert, I did not have enough room in this border for them all. Oh, oh, I was going out for dinner when I was planting these and to be honest, I had planned to keep them all separated and labelled up so that I would know when I came to um, collect them because I am going to probably take them up and replace them with other flowers once they're past their best because I have loads of annuals growing. So I wanted to obviously be able to um, store them knowing what variety they were. But honestly, I began to run out of time. I got really tired. I've been at it all day building the border <laughs> and I ended up just sort of plonking them all in really um, at t about two inches in depth. So. Again, because I was tired, I was rushing it. And so that has also added to my anxiety about whether or not these ranunculars and anemones will 
um, fail, I am really worried about it. So as you can see, I started off thinking, oh look, I'm going to label them all and lay them in sort of rows or blocks of colour. Uh, and I did start out like that and then very quickly, especially crouching and kneeling down at this level for so long. Oh dear. So I spaced them, I think, probably four, five inches apart. I think they might be a bit close. I was mindful of the fact they get quite a lot of foliage and they can have up to 10 stems on them. And obviously I didn't want to reduce the ability of them to grow that many stems and to completely thrive. But at the same time, I don't want gaps of spare soil in between them because to me that's just horrible i actually really can't stand spare soil where i had one that hadn't sprouted but wasn't moldy i just kind of crammed it in in the in the hope that it might you know once it's in the soil come to life and start to grow so i didn't discard them unless they were obviously diseased and it was during this laying out process that i pretty quickly began to realise that I had a lot more corms than I had space in this particular border. So then I sort of had this sort of sinking feeling that the rest of them were either going to have to go back in the garage or I was going to have to find somewhere else to plant them. And this was, I was running out of time, as I said, I was going out for dinner. So I decided I was going to use these troughs, which I hadn't intended to use for the ranunculars but I kind of had no choice. So the next step was to bury them basically and to just dig down. In most places the soil was just loose enough for me to do it with my fingers but in some parts where perhaps I hadn't got down with the spade just that little bit deep enough I did um, loosen it up with my um, fork. And that was harder work really than I expected just because there were so many of them and because of the position I couldn't really kneel on the gravel so I was sort of squatting and it was just quite difficult really. But anyway, the sprouts are showing through. And the next thing I had to worry about was to stop the dogs digging this beautiful border, which they will just see as such a great boneyard, that I had to think of a way. So I had to come up with another one of my ugly contraptions to um, obviously water them in, of course, I forgot that bit to protect them from the dog digging. And that is just the worst bit. Until these borders get established, I just have to have these ugly sort of covers and contraptions over them um, because the dogs just will dig them up. And so I had this polythene sheet, which I had bought to build a cold frame with. And then I just got an old, I had one of those old plastic walk-in greenhouses, which had fallen apart in high wind so I kind of rearranged the plastic legs and stuff to make that cold frame and then I planted the others in pots in those troughs there and I still after all that had a load of enemies left so I had to go back to this ugly contraption here that I made in this border and put them in there. So I spread the anemones. You can see the anemones are slightly different bulbs. They've got, and they were already sprouting a lot, but they're, they're different to the octopus tentacles of the ranunculars. They're kind of more like ugly potatoes, really. Um, so I put those in the uh, um, temporary bed that I made for, which I imagined only a week earlier would fit all of these bulbs, ha ha. Um, I definitely went and bought too many of these and then I realised they didn't even fit all in there. So I actually had to plant them in the whole border, which was fine because I did have some gladioli, um, which I did in my other video, but they, because they flower later, I figured that putting the anemones in the border where the gladioli were wouldn't really make any difference. They were still going to grow up around them. But it's not ideal because they are shorter and I hadn't really wanted the shorter plants in this bed. But I was 
you know, just running out of time and options to resolve this issue. And I didn't want to put them back in the garage because ultimately they needed to be outdoors. And, and in the end, I ended up doing the same as I did with the gladioli, which was to just, I got them all out of their trays. And I must to say, I was pretty impressed by how well they'd sprouted. Um, I just got them all in their tray, out of their trays, one by one, each tray, put them in a pile, and then I spread them around the border, digging them in in much the same way that I did with the gladiola. This is a semi-garden tour update. So the ranunculus have been in now for probably four days. And this is how you walk down the garden. And there's my rose hedge on the left, and you see my pots of spring bulbs on the right. And then where you see that bench sort of sticking out, actually the roses, um, if you want to see how I did the black spot and cutting back the roses and feeding them ready for spring, that's in another video which I'll link below. So here's the ranunculus here underneath this dreadful contraption, but uh, a contraption that I feel is essential until all the green has filled out the space. But they seem to have perked up. I mean, they didn't exactly wilt or anything, but they have definitely put on some sort of strength and vibe for living. They, they're they sort of stretching up, they're greening up a bit now, which is great because I was really worried about that. And they're sort of standing proud, which is always a really good sign that they are happy where they are. And then this is the ones in the trough, and I've only got one that was sprouting enough to be showing through. The rest are still under there, hopefully making some progress. This is the horrible sort of border that, it won't be horrible of course when it's done, but at the moment it's just grim. And this has got the anemones in and there's no sign because these really were just buds. So they've only been in what, four days? And so there's no sign of those coming up yet. And I planted some seeds here as an experiment and they're not coming up either. Hmm. Anyhow, so let's do this sort of semi-garden tour so you get a view of what I'm doing. So this is as you walk down the garden and um, these are the plants that you see on my way to my art studio um, and my utility room, basically. And then I've got the ranunculus on this side and this side. So that's going to look really pretty with the roses coming up behind them on the left as you walk down the path. So, you know, there is there is a method in my madness. <laughs> this will all be resolved, hopefully. Um, so you walk down the path, down the garden, past the borders, and you get to the fire pit here, which needs a bit of a weeding, and I need to burn off this um, stuff that wouldn't fit in my green waste recycling. Um, I don't recommend buying this fire pit, actually. Um, it looks great and fun, and it actually is, except for you cannot get holes through it. So unless you can drill holes through stain, um, whatever steel it is, don't bother, because it just fills up with water. So this is the border that I did originally to plant all the bulbs, because I had too many bulbs. And then this is my kind of messy sorting area where uh, this was a chicken coop, but it basically has all my bulbs and where I store everything over winter, some of my tools, and I've got to sort all that seed um, starting area. And then you come down here to this area here, which is, um, you know, a nice shady coffee morning sort of area. And, you know, I have this vision of filling it up with sort of botanicals. I'm not really into uh, plants that aren't native because I do like to encourage wildflowers and the natural wildlife but um, you know sometimes you just need a bit of a statement area and these are my camellias and they are just coming into flower and I've got two and I actually moved this because it wasn't in the right location when I moved into the house and I moved this camellia here where I knew it would get the better conditions and it took about three or four years to get over the shop no probably two and then it started to flower. So it's really chuffed that I was able to keep that alive. And then, whoa, and then over here, if you just wanna look through there, that's my church, the village church. So I live quite close to the center of the village. Over here by the old chicken coop, which was my rabbit hutch, which the rabbit died. So I'm now using it for gardening stuff, which I'm gonna do as a whole new project to sort that area out. And then as you look back again towards that shaded area, the coffee morning area, you can see I've got ivy, blossom, 
rambling roses and climbing roses over this pergola here. They haven't been trimmed back because I've run out of time. I have a cotton wool tree behind there, which the birds and the bees love. It's really wildlife friendly. And then I have another climber and a honeysuckle on this side of the pergola, which just goes over the arch, as you can see towards that camellia. And I will extend the path underneath here also. I had thought about putting an art studio down this area and that is not off the table. It is still very much on the table, but a project for another time. All right, so that's a partial garden tour. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope your ranunculus are coming on as well as mine. And I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.